Almighty God, come flood this place. Fill this atmosphere, Lord God. Move through this place, Spirit of God. Fill us with your presence, God. Fill those voids, those cracks, those crevices, God, that we need you to fill. Be what we need you to be this morning, God. Let that spirit overflow. Let it stay hot inside of us, Lord God. We can't let it stay hot without that fire, God, so set us on fire. Set us on fire, God. Let us set us ablaze this morning, Jesus. Oh, 
There's nothing worth more than the presence of our King. Amen. No and there's no place I'd rather be. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Everybody say amen to that. Amen. Where else can we go in the time of need but to the one that has the answer? When your children are hurting or dying or desperate and your family is torn apart, there's no other place. How many of you want to stay in that presence of the Lord? Come on, bless the Lord at all times and let his, his praise continually be upon your lips. Can we lift our hand and just say, Lord, I want you all the time, never to leave me. You will never forsake me. Let me not forsake your presence, but live under your shadow. Come on, let's give our Lord a great big hand. Let him know we love him today. He's got great things in store. While you're at it, let's appreciate the praise team. Amazing today. I don't know if you noticed or not, but there's some harmony going on up in here. A lot of practice and work. We appreciate all their labors and efforts. Turn to your neighbor and tell them everything. No, 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 that's it. Everything is going to be all right. Anybody believe that God's bigger than everything? Sometimes we get bummed out by one thing or two things. But how he can do all things well? Amen. You may be seated if you like this morning. Anybody feel like you're the happiest person in the house? Okay. There's only three of us, I guess, working here on this. I guess since I already had my hand up and I have the microphone, you know I'm going to win, so you don't want to argue with me, but what a blessed week this has been. There's so many things going on, and I, I'm going to say something a little bit heavy, and I'm going to ask you to put your thinking cap on spiritually, because God is good even when things are bad. God is good when life is rotten. God is good when you get a bad report. God is good when you're sick. God is good when the doctor doesn't have a clue what to do for you. Everybody say, he's good all the time. So why do we forget? Because we are flesh and we have to constantly war against our flesh. How many know that if God's already made a promise, he's going to fulfill what he said? So what you need to do is go back and rehearse a verse. I'm going to say it again. Rehearse a verse. If God's made a promise to you, put it on your refrigerator. Whatever you got to do, write it on the wall if you have to. Put it in your car. Because the Bible said in the Old Covenant, God made promises to his people. And he said, put these promises on your doorpost. Put them on your gate. Put them where you work. Put them where you eat. Why? Because flesh tends to forget. When you forget, you're in trouble. When you remember God, everything begins to turn around for his glory. Anybody believe that God is always in charge if we let him? There's an old song, one of my favorite songs was written by uh, P.B. Bliss. It was written because a man uh, named Spafford had gone through a great crisis in his life. Most of you know the song, It Is Well With My Soul. Story goes, and I won't get all the details of it exactly right, but his wife had gone with the three daughters across on an ocean liner back home. In the middle of the ocean, they were capsized and, and the children were drowned, the the wife miraculously was able to get help, and she was taken to land. And she sent a, back in those days, they didn't have cell phones, and they didn't have other communications. So she, she sent a, a teletype to him, and she said, all is lost, only I'm escaped to live. And what she was saying is, the children are gone, but I'm alive, miraculously. He got on an ocean liner as quick as he could and went to find uh, back to the homeland where she was. And on the way, in the middle of the night, the captain came to him and said something profound. He said, sir, right now, if you want to come out on the deck, we'll look around. This is just about the exact place where your three baby girls are, are, are drowned, and this is their burial place. As he stood there for a moment, he knew he could have lost it. He knew he could have given up faith. He knew he could do a lot of things wrong. But he began to write a song, and this is what the words of the song say. When peace like a river attends my way, and even when sorrows like sea billows roll, Whatever my lot, you have taught me to say, it is well with my soul. How many of you would like to be able to trust God when nothing makes sense? How many of you are learning to get back your faith in God quicker when you're knocked down than ever before? Say it with me out loud. It's not well yet, but it shall be well. Now, I'm going to talk to you like a pastor, so hang on and don't think I'm throwing you away this morning, but... The body of Christ, the real body of Christ, there's a lot of people that the Bible said they worship God in vain, but the real believers, wherever they are around the world, are going through greater testings and attacks than we've ever been through before. And we have to. For your faith to grow, you have to go through bigger stuff. Am I right? Some people only come to God when they have to have a miracle. 
That's not a great relationship. It's not a criticism. It's just reality. How many of you know when we're really in trouble, we come to God for a real miracle? And there's some people that they, you know, they, they think about God once in a while. You know, they, they got little post-its on their house here and there, and, and they see the Bible on the couch or whatever. But how many of you realize God wants an intimate relationship, not just when we're in trouble, but all the time? Now, this is not, not going to sh- shed a bad light on my children because I think all children in church think like this sometimes. We, when the children were little, they would say once in a while, somebody would come we hadn't seen in a long time, and, and they'd come up and they'd say, Dad, are, what's their problem? What are they going through? I said, why do you think they're going through something? He said, well, usually we don't see them until they're in trouble. And they weren't being mean. It was, just, it was just observation. How many of you realize, I want the Lord when things are good? You know, I don't want God just to hear me when I'm crying. I want God to enjoy my laughter. I want God to hear me praise him when everything's okay. And I don't need anything. Dottie Rambo wrote a song. She said, Lord, I didn't come to ask you for anything. I just came to talk to you. How many of you like to be able to have the Lord always present even when things are okay? Come on, somebody say everything is going to be all right. Run to the scripture very quickly uh, tonight, today if you can in 2 Kings chapter 4. Uh, a powerful, powerful area. And, uh, it spawns something strong in me. On the service on Tuesday night, a word was given. Our sister shared a thought that God gave to her. And as soon as she said it, the light went on. The Lord said, I want my people to grab a hold of this truth. We've been dealing with parts of it. We've been dealing with areas of it. But the Lord is wanting us to know that he's God all the time. How many know if God is always in control and we allow him to be in control all the time, that we'd be blessed all the time? See, I don't have time to be up and down. I have to stay on top. I don't have time to stay in the valley. I got things to do on the mountaintop. As a matter of fact, if you see me in the valley, I'm not really in the valley. I'm just changing mountains. Okay. I said, well, brother, what, what do you mean? How deep the valley? See, the deeper the valley, it indicates usually the higher the mountain. So I'm getting ready to from better blessings than I've ever had in my life. Don't get jealous. Join me. Notice this, if you will. There's a story that, that is significant for all of us. And, and I want you to notice what happened. It fell into the, Anybody ever have one of those days? <laughs> the other day, I, I noticed that we had a little problem downstairs. We had a Uh, one of the hot water heaters was leaking and it couldn't find it where it's leaking because the pan it's supposed to leak in was also leaking. Bummer. And and so I called out the the plumber and he said, yeah, your your hot water heater's gone. It's from about 2000, so you need another one and and it's leaking. He said, but it's not leaking very much. It'll be okay. Look at me. Don't trust everybody (laughs) without full inspection. So later in the evening, I went back to check and see it wasn't just a little bit of water. It was all the way in the, uh, the laundry room, and it was all the way under the staircase, and it was all the way now starting to head into the den. And I thought, I, I need to do something. So I started tearing out floor and started getting the vacuum thing to get up all the water. Anybody know the preachers do more than just go to church? <laughs> okay, and so I was able to get it all turned off. Now we didn't have any hot water in the house, and some parts of the house didn't have any water at all because I'd rather have no water in the house than to have my flood. Everybody say, wisdom is justified of her children. So I went out to the other part of the house where their other hot water heater is and found out that it was leaking too. Everybody say, I had a day. Besides all the other issues in life, I'm mopping floors and vacuuming up stuff and trying to rearrange besides all the other things that are going on. I know there's a lot going on right now. Come on, say amen. So what I'm trying to show you is sometimes you have just one of those days. How many of you have them pretty often? <laughs> How many of you are learning to sing while you're mopping? Come on, sing while you're going. Come on, sing while you're calling a technique. Come on, say amen. The man said, I can't help you till Monday. How many of that's really a bummer when they give you a bad report? So it fell on a day that Elisha passed through Shunem, and it was a great woman, a very important woman in town. She, she constrained him to stop and, and have dinner with her, eat bread with her and her family. So it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in there to eat bread. I can say it as an evangelist that any time we found a family that would feed you, we would stop often. If they could cook real well, we would make our plans to stop even more often. How many of you here I'm talking about? So the Bible said, she said to her husband one time, look, behold, the, the, the servant of the Lord, he's a holy man of God, and he's always passing by, and so let's make him a little chamber. Let's, let's get a place for him on our house so he can stay at our house. How many believe we need the presence of God to stay at our house? Some people the Lord passes by. She wanted the Lord to come and stay. And, and let's sit before him a, a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick, and, and it shall be. Everybody say, it shall be. When he comes to us, he will turn in here, and it fell on a day. <laughs> it fell on a day that he came there, and he turned into the chamber, and he lay down, and he said to Gehazi, his servant, 
Call the Shunammite, call that woman. And when he called her, she stood before him. And he said, say now to her, behold, you've been very careful. You've taken good care of us. Uh, what do you want us to do for you? Would you like for me to talk to the king in your behalf? Would you like me to talk to the army captain, the host? And she said, I, I dwell among my own people. He's saying, do you need somebody to come, maybe the army, come and plow the fields or help you with your harvest? Or do you need somebody politically? She said, no, I, I don't need any of that. You know, I'm okay. And then he said to the servant, what is to be done for her? What do you think she needs? Gehazi said, well, she doesn't have a child and her husband's old. Can everybody just say, okay. He said, well, call her. When he had called her, she stood at the door, and he said, about this season, according to the time of life, you're going to embrace a child. You're going to have a baby. And she said, no, my Lord. No, thou man of God. Don't lie to your handmaiden. You know, sometimes we think it's too late. But the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elijah had said to her, according to the time of life. When the child was grown or was growing up, it fell on a day, another day. He went out to his father to the reapers and said to the father my head my my head told the young people carry the boy home to his mother when they had taken him up they brought him to his mother and he sat on her knees till noon and then he died this is the child the miracle child that god had given to her look at verse 21 and let's read it slowly she went up and laid the baby boy or the young boy on the bed of the man of god she shut the door upon him and went out. She didn't take him to her bed or her house. She got him in the presence of the Lord. The most significant thing I can tell you in life is stay in the presence of God. I don't care what kind of a car you drive, how beautiful your home, how awesome your clothes. If you don't have the presence of God, you're poor. If you have the presence of God, you have everything you need for now and for all of eternity. So she doesn't take him to her bed. She takes him to where the presence of the Lord had been. I love that. She called her husband and said, send me one of the young men, and probably with the mules and the, the chariot or whatever, and I'm going to run to the man of God, and I'm going to come back. And he said, why are you going to the man of God today? It's not a, a, a holy day or a new moon or a Sabbath. And look what she said. It, it shall be well. You know, it's really hard when you sometimes can't even tell your family what you're believing. She didn't say, our boy's dead in the prophet's chamber. I'm going to go get the prophet to pray. She just said, it shall be well. Look at me. If it's not well, don't say, if you can't say it yet, it is well. Say, it shall be. Where is your faith? What are you going through right now? If you're saying, well, I'm going through all of this, refocus and say, it shall be well. We say around here a lot, everything is going to be all right it doesn't mean it's all right it's going to be all right yeah i got a bad report but the report is going to change how many of you know god knows how to fix your body when the one that diagnoses you only knows a small fraction of what is going on in the human experience but the god that made you knows how to resurrect you even if you're dead and put your body back together so don't focus on what you see can i say this real quickly we walk by faith and not by when that becomes practical application, you stop looking at what you see and remember what God said you're going to see. You stop listening to what you hear and you remember what God has already spoken. I don't want to listen. I don't want to hear to the human experience. I want to remember thus saith the word of God. God has promised me and he's never failed me. He's not going to fail me. He's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. I'm going to refocus and stay focused on the promise. So they saddled up the mule, and she said to the servant, Drive and go forward. Don't slack your riding because of me unless I bid you. In other words, go as fast as you can until I tell you to stop. She came to the man of God to Mount Carmel, and it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, behold, over yonder there is that Shunammite woman. Run, I pray thee, and meet her. Say unto her, Is it well with you? Come on, somebody say, Is it well? And is it well with your husband? Is it well with a child? And she answered, it is well. She told her husband it's going to be, but when she got in the presence of God, she said it is. Can I say this and hear it very clearly this morning? When you're in the presence of God, it's well. I don't care what's going on around you, it's well. Jesus got to a dead man that had been rotten for four days, and he stood there by the open grave, and he said, Lazarus, come forth. Why? Because when the Lord is there, death has got to lose its hold. Defeat has lost its power, and the ability of God begins to work in your life. Would somebody say with me today, in my circumstance, it's well. 
She finally got to the man of God on the hill and caught him by the feet. And Gehazi came to push her away. And the, 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 the man of God said, leave her alone. Her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord has hid it from me that he has not told me. I want to say this because sometimes people don't understand. Well, well, pastor, why don't you know everything that's going on in everybody's life in the congregation and stop it before it happens? Sorry, but it doesn't work like that. There's sometimes God will tell me specifically what's going on. There's other times he doesn't. I mean, sometimes God is weaning people off me to him. How I many everybody can hear from God? Amen. We're wearing the preachers out. If I can get to the preacher, no, rearrange your mouth and say, if I can get to God. Well, how do I get to God? I'm glad you asked. He's ever present, never leaves you, never forsakes you, but you got to know that. See, the Lord is here, but it doesn't do any good if you don't know he's here. The healer is right here, but if you don't know that, you'll stay sick. The deliverer is right here, but if you don't recognize that and think he's afar off, you're going to stay. Come on, somebody say, you'll, you'll never find your victory. Can I tell you that I have served God almost all my life, but i got to tell you something. There's times I forgot he was right here. Where are you, Lord? He's like, duh. What do you mean, where am I? I'm everywhere. I hear people say, well, I sent the Lord to Florida, to the hospital. You don't have to send him to Florida. He's already there. Since he's already there in the hospital room, just let him work. It's when you agree that he's there. Come on, somebody say he's everywhere. Oh, man, we need to get a hold of that. We think we know it, but we got it here. We need to let it travel 18 inches to here. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He said, lo, I'll be with you always. Some people are afraid, afraid. A friend of mine went on a plane ride for the first time, and he said, I'm afraid. I said, no, you don't have to be afraid. Even though the Lord said, lo, I'll be with you. Okay. He's also with you at 30,000 feet. Just helping you right here. He said her, she's confused. She's hurting right now. She's lost a baby, but God didn't tell me anything. Then she said, Lord, did I desire, did I even ask for a baby? Didn't I tell you not to deceive me? What she's saying is, I didn't ask for a baby just to be maybe 12 years old and then die. I didn't ask for that. I told you not to do it. I didn't even believe for that. But you brought a baby to my life. How many when God gives you a child, that covenant is for you? God said the mothers of Zion will not bear their children in vain. Somebody ought to run with that verse. He said to Gehazi, gird up your loins, put on your belt, tighten up your clothes, and take my staff, which represents my presence. Take it in your hand and go. If you meet any man, don't greet him. If any man greets you, don't greet him back. But lay my staff, which has the presence of God, on the face of the child. The mother of the child said, as the Lord lives and as thy soul lives, I will not leave you. And he arose and followed after her. Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child, and there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore, he went again to meet him and told him, saying, the child is not awake. I want to stop right here and say something. Just because you pray one time doesn't mean if it doesn't happen instantly that it's not going to happen. Remember the story we preached a few months ago? God said, when you knock, just keep on knocking. If you got a visitor that comes at night and you got to go to your neighbor and ask for bread and they won't let you in, keep knocking until you put them out of their misery. Come on, keep knocking until they're so tired and sick of hearing you knock, they'll open the door. How many know that God is not like that? He always has the door open and he always has the bread ready and he's just waiting for us to come and receive. Can somebody just say, temporary setbacks are not final. First report was the child didn't wake up when I did it. Elijah was coming to the house. Behold, the child was dead. Laid upon his bed. I got to say this as a traveling minister. If somebody dead is laying on my bed, I'm going to get serious. I like to sleep. I've never had to sleep with a dead body in my bed. Get the picture. The prophet is saying, if I'm going to sleep tonight, I got to raise that dead boy. Are you getting the picture? See, this woman is real smart. She knows if the prophet has got something in his way, he's got to do it for himself and for me. So the prophet went in, and when he went into the room, he saw for himself that the situation was desperate and the child was dead, laying on his bed. He went in, and I love this. He shut the door. The beginning of the chapter, there's a story of a woman that was about to lose her home, have to sell her sons into slavery because her husband was a prophet, but he was dead, and she had no income. The prophet said, I want you to go to all over the neighborhood and borrow all the vessels you can, all the empty vessels you can, and bring them in your house. Shut the door. You know, some of us need to just close out the door against people that negative folks and discouraging folks and doubters and hate mongers. And everybody say, close the door. 
He told her, when you take the vessels inside, close the door. He blessed her one pot of oil. She filled up all the pots that were all over her house with that one little vessel because she was willing to get alone with God and hear God and have God's presence. If God's presence is with you, everything is going to change. How many of you have God's presence in your house? How many just feel it here? Anybody ever just feel it when you come here Sundays and Tuesdays? Okay. How many of you have it just as strong at home sometimes? As anybody ever sing at home or study at home? See, my mom used to have, remember records? Remember back, you old folks, remember records, 33 RPM, 45, 70. Anybody remember the old days? And she always got that shouting stuff, that dancing stuff. And I learned how to dance in the living room. Okay. I'm not getting any amens here. You know why? Because we needed God most of the time more at the house than we needed him when we were at church. Trouble seemed to come, not when we were in church, but when we were going through stuff during the week. Am I right? So the Bible said the man of God went in and he closed out all the doubt, the fear, the unbelief. He closed out everything. And notice what he did. He went up and he laid down upon the child, put his mouth to his mouth, his eyes to his eyes, his hands to his hands, stretched himself upon the child, uh, 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 the flesh of the child, until the flesh began to get warm. I want to show you the significance of this. We have a grown man laying down face to face with a dead boy. Why did he do that? Because sometimes you need to ask God to let you impart what you have. Heart to heart. To someone else if you're on fire if you're warm as we learned this morning if you're hot give that heat to somebody else come on spiritualize with me just a moment he literally laid the power of God and the presence of the body of Christ if you will upon that dead child and he prayed he imparted into him what he had if you don't have anything in you you can't impart anything to anybody else I don't know why I don't pray for folks well once you get something inside you can give it away it won't be you, it'll be what you have on the inside. So the, the, the man of God stretched himself upon the child, and he returned and walked in the house to and fro, and then he went back up and stretched himself upon the child, and the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. I want to give you hold of something because I've watched this kind of a thing unfold. We were in, in, the, in a church in a little town called Farmersville, California. You can still be saved even if you don't know where that is. <laughs> But I'll never forget, my oldest brother started his, his evangelistic ministry, and it went back to Dad's old church in Farmersville. We had moved on, went back to Farmersville for his first revival. People had heard about the, the first revival. They heard about the family coming, and uh, some of our elders brought all their family, and it was an amazing time. But I'll never forget, one of the elders, one of our favorite elder men, he, he came and brought all of his family, and they're all sitting there, sinners, wanting to find out what this new preacher is going to do. About the time my brother's getting ready to get up to preach, the father of these children got up and walked outside because in those days we didn't have all the fineries of life. So he went outside to the pump to get a drink of water at the well. As he got to the door, he fell dead. Half his body's in that church, half the body's outside on the sidewalk. He's laying there dead. They didn't know what to do, so they called the local uh, police officers. They called the hospital. They called and they sent out a man to, to check him and they found out that they did all the testing they could. And they said, he's, he's, Mr. he's gone. This man is dead. Make preparations, get an ambulance, and take him. My father said, wait a minute. I want to pray for him. Whew. After they had already you know, called in the text and found out how dead he was and had been for a while, my father went over to the door. I'll never forget as long as I live. He laid down on that man face to face, hand to hand, imparted into him life. I must have that don't work. Yes, it does, because he got up. He had never preached in his life, barely testified. For the rest of his life, he went around telling what the Lord had done for him, because everybody knew him, and many of the people were in the service, they knew him. How many of you realize we're never going to see that unless we try? Has it ever even crossed our mind if we're coming upon a dead person to just impart life? Anybody think it's about time we start learning? To do what the scripture says we can do. You know my father never did that again. Because he never had that opportunity again. Amen. But we've had occasion since to speak life into dead bodies. In this ministry. Some of you are in the service you understand. You can't do that but God can. Look at me. Never worry about trying to fail. You can't do it. God can. And you know where he lives? You know what mouth he uses? You know what hands Come on, I'm making a strong point, and we realize it's true. So the Bible said the child opened his eyes, and, and he, he called his servant and said, Go call the mama. Came to him, and she fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground. In other words, she worshiped the God 
that had just brought a miracle. She took up her child and she went out. We need to stop praying according to what the doctors think and begin to pray according to what God knows. I want you to write that down. Stop praying according to what the doctors think and pray according to what God knows. Does that make sense? Brother Price and I were talking yesterday, and he said, you know what, I think it was Einstein that's attributed. He said that only 10% of the human brain is being used. Some people less. <laughs> okay, I don't know who you're thinking about, but everybody say, true. And sometimes we don't understand the mysteries of God because his ways are above our finding out. His ways are higher than yours. God hides some things from us. Have you found out that the, the doctors only know a little bit about your body? That's why they practice. They give you medicine. If your right leg doesn't fall off, they say, try this two more times. Have you ever read the back of the pill bottle? Got so discouraged you'd rather stay sick than die? <laughs> Come on. So why all that? This might happen. That might happen. You just got to understand. They're practicing. That's why they call them practicing physicians. Just trying to help somebody here. Don't get discouraged. I'm just trying to show you something. Psalm 46 and 10 says, just be still and know that I'm God. Come on, say it. Be still and know that I'm God. When the prophet Elijah is running for his life from Jezebel, he, he gets in a cave and all of a sudden there's like thunder and noise and lightning and all that. He said, oh God, that must be you. And the Lord said, I'm not in all that. That's noise. Then all of a sudden he got real still and God said, I'm in a small still voice. How many know God doesn't have to shout out loud if he's right inside of you? See, we shout to a God only if he's far off. You don't have to scream to God. He's not next door. He's right here. He hears you before you even whisper. Why? Because he's on the, oh God, everybody say he's on the inside. John 16, 33, Jesus said, These things have I spoken that you might have peace. In the world you have tribulation. All around you is trouble. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. You've got to understand that God is always at peace. He's always in charge. So it's not well today, but it shall be well. Weeping only endures for the night. Joy will come in the morning. Can I get an amen? Elbow your neighbor and tell him it shall be well. God already told you what he's going to do. Hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. So we walk by faith and not by... Don't go by what you see. It will mess you up. Say with me. We don't walk by what we see. In this kingdom, it's not about what you see and hear. It's about what God has already purposed in our life. Everybody say this with me. Everything that is seen... So what you do see that's negative and bad, it's temporary. What you don't see that God has promised is eternal. So you can't see God. But you get him by believing him. Those things that are unseen are more real than what is seen. Everything you see around you is temporary. Nothing in the kingdom is seen. Wow. Everything that is in the kingdom is invisible. I am not visibly saved. I'm invisibly saved. I've never had a preacher get a package called healing and rub it on me. He spoke an invisible word into me that had the blood and the DNA. Come on, you should have been here last week. It had the power, the presence, the anointing, the oil. It had all of it in that word. That's why everything that God is is invisible. Well, I wish I could see it. If you saw it, it wouldn't be God. Okay. <laughs> I think I need to take a week off because I'm not going to be invited back for a while. Come on, say it with me. My eyes are deceiving. My ears deceive me. Have you ever thought you heard something and you didn't? Have you ever thought you saw something and it wasn't like that at all? <laughs> I don't want testimonies. I just want you to nod. Everything you see is earthly and it will change. Everything you hear will be different next week. Ten years ago, what they did on radio and television, they're not talking about that stuff anymore because that's all gone. 
So why do we get hung up on the seen things when the seen things are real and they'll fool you? Let's get back to our faith in God. See those things that cannot be seen by faith, by the authority of God's word. He calls those things that are not as though they already were. I want you to understand, it doesn't matter what you feel. It doesn't matter what you've been told. Everything is going to be okay. Can I get an amen? So we walk by faith. No, we walk by invisible things. God's word is invisible. His presence is invisible. His power is invisible. Healing is invisible. Salvation is invisible. Deliverance is invisible. But it works better than anything that's seen. The blood of Jesus will heal you when the doctor's medicine will kill you. Not all of it. Some will help you for a while. Amen. But everything that God is a part of is by faith. So if you can say it shall be well, it will. Because you're connected to the invisible realm. I'm shouting on the inside. Brother Don, stand up for a moment. I want you to come down here if you will. There's been an attack against you. Come on up here if you will. Men, come and help me a moment if you will. Trevor, you can stay there, but Brent, come and help me a moment. I'm going to ask us to point our hand this way. Just where you're seated, just for a moment, you point your hand this way. The enemy's trying really, really hard to attack and destroy been sick and he just can't get well. I'm going to tell you this little secret about God. God is bigger than what we feel. How many know we need him strong? Come on, somebody said we need him strong. And God said it's not by might. It's not by earthly power. But it's by my spirit. That's why when we anoint with oil, we don't anoint with oil because we think the oil has power. It represents applying the presence of God. When we pray, we're applying our faith in agreement with what God spoke, and we allow that word to begin to be appropriated for the circumstance. I want everybody to point your hand this way, and we're going to speak invisible words to Don. Father, say it with me. In the name of Jesus, we speak to the core root of his problem. We defeat the enemy. We ask you to change those things that are necessary. Give him back what the thief is trying to take away. Let the blood run warm in every organ, his bones, muscles, nerves, all be affected by the power of the presence of God. And Father, we impart an invisible truth, an invisible healing from the crowning of his head through his midsection to the soles of his feet. Death, die. Life, come forth. We speak victory in the name of Jesus. Now, once we believe that we receive it, we have it. So I want us to lift holy hands and give some praise to the Lord. Let's clap hands and give, come on, give some praise to the Father. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. He allows his presence to usurp authority over things. Come on, I feel it already working. You can go your way praising God. Keep on celebrating. Get the word of God alive. Quote it, share it, and allow its victory to have its will. Everybody stand to your feet for just a moment, if you will. Come on, everybody stand for just a moment. I want you to stay along with me. I believe that it is well with my soul. This morning, we've got about seven or more children that are here, children's church for the first time. Somebody had a vision to go out and to bring those that need to know about Jesus Christ. I want you to bow your head, if you will. While we're standing in the presence of God, you're halfway to your victory. I said something kind of heavy even for myself the other day, though it was so simple. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. But we can't get to heaven if we don't find the kingdom here. I'm going to ask you this morning, if you don't have the gift of eternal life, I want you to come. You know what I found out? There's people come and they know all the songs. They can quote scriptures right along with the preacher. But they've never asked the Lord to be the Lord of their life. He doesn't come to be a visitor. He doesn't come to be just a friend that uh, once in a while we contact. No, he wants to be in charge of our life. If he's not Lord of our life, the writer said he's not Lord at all. If he's not the most important part of our life, then why? Why isn't he more important than anyone or anything else? If he really is your Savior, your eternal life giver, how can we take him or leave him? I feel like this morning that I'm talking to somebody that's never been able to make your total commitment to really let him be Savior. If your sins are not forgiven, you're still a sinner. 
we all came into this world sinners. We know that, but there came a time that God cut that off of my life. Now, if I fall down before I hit the ground, I'm already reaching back up and asking, wash me again in your precious blood. I want to talk to someone that's been a struggle to make that consecration, that step. Well, my family will laugh at me or somebody will think that I've done some terrible thing. No, we're all sinners needing a Savior. We want you to come today. If you need a Savior, come right now. Don't wait another moment. We don't have to wait till altar service. These altars are always available day and night. If you have to drive by in the middle of the day, come and kneel at the altar outside the porch. Come whenever you need. But I feel like today somebody is finally being stirred to make a decision to accept Jesus Christ. If I'm talking to you, I want you to come right now. I'm already at the altar because I recognize my need. And I want to pray with you that God will give you to me and to all of us as an eternal family member of the kingdom and God wants to wash away the sin that keeps you from coming in. Save you to the uttermost. Would you come right now? If it's ever one or one, I'm going to take this time to give you that eternal opportunity. If you say yes, you'll thank me forever and forever and forever and forever. Come to receive him this morning. The best choice you'll ever make. Please don't miss eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe Thank you, Jesus. You are all I need. Just believe it in your heart. Confess it with your mouth. Somebody said, I, I'm too bound. I can't be free. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can. You can conquer anything with him living on the inside. He'll create life and victory and authority. If he's not the most important thing, I fear for your soul. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I want to make this declaration just a moment before we pray for others. I'm usually about the last one out the door. Somebody says, well, I just can't come down openly. Well, if that's your lot, don't leave the room till we've had time to pray together and accept Jesus Christ. I said, I'm shy. Well, I understand that I was shy too. But that won't stand up when we have the opportunity to come in private. Fifty-one and a half years I've been available for God's people. I'll be available today. Before you leave this room, please, 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 don't miss eternity for a momentary habit or a bondage. Please. Please. Thank you, Lord. For all the believers that say, Lord, I do believe. I reaffirm my faith and my commitment to you right now. I want you to look at me for just a moment. While I was sitting this morning in prayer, and this has been a very, very heavy week. The Lord said there will be those in the service this Sunday morning that are struggling, trying to believe God can do it. It's a son, it's a brother, it's a father, it's a wife, it's a husband, it's a financial situation. God can do it. He can only do it if we let him. We have to come to the place where we say it's going to be well. Well, I've been sick a long time, and my family had the same thing. No, no, no. Don't get into that family inherited stuff. How many of the Lord heals everything? Say it with He's still able. Doesn't matter how long you've been sick, He's still able. I would, if you're here and you've got a situation that you're warring in your spirit, if God is going to do it, I want you to come right now. We're going to release the, the, the finished product of God's power and His Word in your life. If there's one or everyone, I want to release the power for you to say, It's well. It is going to be well. God's Word is true. I'm not going to die before my time. I'm not going to let the enemy steal my children. I'm going to stand and claim a covenant promise for everyone that I love. I made up my mind a month ago. I'm going to see my whole family saved. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. No sickness and disease remain. All of the promises of God. Yes and amen. If you're not walking in that victory, I want you to come and let's shake off the lie and claim the promise. It shall be well. It shall be well. Come on, if I'm talking to you, come right now. There's something going on. There's a threat against your life. Let's break off the threat. 
Let's break off the attack. Thank you, Lord. Some of you are fighting more than one battle. Come on up, please, if you will. I'm just going to say this. The enemy rear-ended her car trying to take her out in an unexpected moment. She's not just fighting physical battles from that attack and that damage, but she's praying for some that need a miracle that she loves. She's praying for changes in many realms of life. I agree with you, woman of God. Like the Shunammite we say today, it shall be well. Thank you, Lord. Come on, stand together with me. It shall be well. I didn't say it's well now, but it may happen before you walk out the building. It can happen today. It can happen this week. It's starting right now. It has begun. Make it new and better than before. We claim that right now. Come on, body. Say it along with me in, in encouragement. It shall be well. Nothing missing, nothing broken. That's part of his name. Nothing. Nothing missing. No promises missing. Nothing broken. Nothing remains broken in his presence. It's all right. You turned the corner today and you're here because God spoke. It's your day to live again and love again and laugh again. April, come on up. Stand close if you will. Thank you, Lord. Just ladies, come, Heather, come and stand. I didn't want to tell you something. This battle has not just started yesterday. But little increments of the battle that you're in, the walk that you're in right now, it's been going on for a while. You face thoughts and discouragements and attacks and, and, and abandonments and situations and attacks in many ways. And the Lord said, it has come to a head right now in your life. And the Lord said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will come to you. And I will give you back beauty for your ashes and joy for your morning time. Because you're allowing the Lord of your life to begin to saturate you from the inside out with hope and peace. Knowing that it shall be well. It's all right. Tears are okay. They simply mean that you're letting out the pain. Honey, God's going to you first, and then he's going where you can't go. Fixing what you can't fix. The battle is not yours because there's not a thing you can do about it. The battle is the Lord's. Well, it's too big of a battle. No, there was a, some say about a 14-year-old boy named David that fought a giant with a rock and a rag. He also was facing an army of giants. He had no fear because he knew it shall be well today because God is with me in the battle. Your battle is coming to an end right now, so I'm going to ask you to transition from the pain, from the worry, from the threat. I want you to transition into just praise and thanksgiving. I declare to you prophetically today, my sister, it shall be well, and it has already begun. Let's give some glory and honor to the Lord. Thank God for where you are. You're not where you were. You're at a brand new place, a brand new purpose. Let's agree together. Father, we reach out and we touch your sister. Don, I agree with you for the word of the Lord. I know the threatening words that have been spoken. I also know that you're in this place. You've had to struggle to get here. You're here because you believe that it shall be well. It shall be well. It shall be well. We agree with the word of God. Our mind does not go any other place. We realize doctors only know a part, but you know every cell of her body and name them one by one. You know every hair upon her head and number them one by one. If you love her that much, you're the God that's going to let your blood flow to the marrow of her bones and to the, to the various organs of her body and every parasite that's tried to attach itself to her. We say to you, woman of God, be healed in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God working on the inside. We speak life in Jesus' name. Come all of us to agree, to agree together say, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's say it together again as a family. It shall be well. And the shall be started today in the presence of the Lord. Cindy, we agree with you right now that the presence of God does physical, spiritual, emotional, domestic, financial, psychological miracles as well as physical healings. Salvation and deliverance for those that they know about him. But he's just outside the door. I agree with your petition and I rebuke the threat that's caused you to reach forth for a miracle and a change. Come on, body of Christ, say, we agree with you and the word of God you're claiming today. So we say together, it is well. Starting this moment, it is well. 
Come on, let's clap our hands, give God some praise. It is well. Say it, it is well. It is well. It is well. Come on, let's praise him for just a moment. Can everybody in agreement say it is done? Beginning the moment we ask and believe, we call it forth for his glory. Go, let's clap holy hands and give him praise and honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. One of the hardest things in the world to do is to say it, it shall be well. Come on, say together, it shall be well. Bella, I want to touch and I ask God to fight for you, win for you, and give you peace. The enemy would say you're not of value. The enemy would say you are never going to see the victory and the blessing. The Lord said the devil is a liar because he loves you with an everlasting perfect love. Nobody is more worthy than you are. Nobody more capable because you want him, need him, love him. He's right here and he will never abandon you. So God, go ahead and gather up all the leaves off the tree, all that's been scattered, all the fruit, and put them in his basket to enjoy from this day forward. Your provision, because I say to you, it shall be well. And we agree together for the promises and the hope that's before you. Come on, all of us say it together in Jesus' name. Can we say together, it's done in Jesus' name. Can I, can I bless you? Can the body of Christ say together, a brand new day. So the promise that God has made you a long time ago, little, little parts of it seem to unfold and they're manifested. But there's so much in the realm of promise. Hope, believing, asking, prayer, prophetic, that has not yet come to pass. Too many people have come up, and they didn't come to water your tree. They come to just steal the fruit. They came to pluck the leaves so that the heat would beat down on you. God is simply saying there are those that have used and hurt the gift that is inside of you. But the Father said, I'm going to give you back all and more than what has been taken sevenfold. So where you once danced, you're going to dance with hilarious dancing. And where you laughed, you're going to laugh out loud. And where you've wept, it's going to be sweet tears of joy and thanksgiving. I break off the attack of the enemy that has tried to steal your gifting and steal that anointing and that profound word of God that bubbles up within your soul. And too many times the enemy's right there to put a cover over your fire and try to shut it out. God said, it's never going to happen again. I'm going to let you sing the song and celebrate the word and dance your dance and praise in that victory. And everyone that is of you will recognize that God has fulfilled his covenant promise. So I release you to the high place. I release you to the completion. And I say to you, starting this moment, everything... Everything, it shall be well. Come on, saints of God, say it shall, double positive, it shall be well. If the woman of God in the Bible could say it over a dead baby, you can say it over everything that's dead in your life that God is going to resurrect. I receive no more death but life. Full life, full peace, full joy, full righteousness. In the power of your Holy Spirit, we release it now. Come on, say it with me out loud. It shall be well, because it is well in the presence of the Lord. Let's give praise to the Lord. Magnify his name. Say it, it shall be well. Come on, all together, say it, it shall be well. I want to do this as a family. I want you to put your hand over your heart and say, I believe I am a temple of God. I will live all my days in health, in youth. My mind will be strong. My body will function. Strong. Powerful. Agile. Keen ability. 
all the days of my life. I will live my life to glorify God because it is well. Right now, I walk in it and I give God the praise. Turn to your neighbor and tell him everything is turning today. It is well. Come on, say it out loud. It is well.